How's it going? Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome back to Amanda Muse. Special guest, that guy. Hi. So. Again. Again, yes. So this morning, I had shared with you guys that I was going to actually be sitting down and doing a video about work history, but then I realized he was home, and we had promised that we were going to talk about some travel tips. Yeah, some travel tips, yeah. So if you guys have anything you want to talk about or if you want to have any suggestions and we can kind of rebound it back to everybody that's watching that'd be great yeah so i see there's some people there's some people tuning in hi everybody good come. evening here they come good yeah. evening good evening good evening so if you're watching the replay oh hi Go unless it's yourself. on the other side of the world then then it's morning it's morning or afternoon or afternoon yeah. so hello hi joanna hi just jody hey joanna so hi, hi. all right we're excited. We're excited. People <laughs> okay. are showing up. Hey. Okay. hey. We're waiting. We're waiting for some people. Yay, you get to catch us live. She says, hey, Dane. Hi. <laughs> Who's asking? Who's asking? Jo oh, hi, Joanna. J-Dog. Oh, awesome. Um, oh, Jessica was saying this is perfect because she's literally about to fly home by herself with her eight Where is Jessica? Where are you? Jessica, tell us. where. How long are you flying? How long is your flight? We're interested. Oh, do we lose the feed? No, they're going to come back with oh. questions. It just kind of delayed. Okay. Um, so what I thought we would do is Dean obviously has traveled quite a bit because, oh, Florida, she's flying for three hours. Oh, to, uh, to Florida or from Florida? Somewhere. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> three hours. Yeah. So what we can do is Dean... You've got a lot of stuff you can just like explain about traveling. Yeah, we can do it, and... we can do it a couple different ways. We can talk about the hot topics that are coming up. Uh, Lately in the news, uh, treatment of flight attendants to passengers and vice versa. Um, Air Asia had a little mishap with one of their engines uh, vibrating for an hour, and the captain turned back and uh, was asking people to pray and and whatnot. We could talk about that. Yeah. Um, just some little tips, things that I do when I travel. Um, I don't do them so much anymore because I don't do a lot of overseas travel anymore. I kind of go north and south, South America and North America. So uh, we can talk about that. Is there anything that you want to talk about? Well, I can definitely talk about travel with children solo. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I traveled pregnant with <clears throat> Esme from Malaysia all the way back to Canada. <sighs> Still tired. <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> he was like, I don't know if this is the best idea, but I did it. And then when I was pregnant with Jack, I traveled again, pregnant, about five months pregnant with a toddler all the way back to Canada. Um, so that was crazy. Uh, but yay, yay, you've made it. Lauren's made it on time. Awesome. Okay, so let's jump into it. Okay, so... Uh, first tip. So first tip that I do, depending on where you're going, but my experience is a lot of North America to Asia. Uh, so things, things that you may or may not think about, even if you're going to just, you know, doing a Mexico trip or whatnot, is sorting out your email before you go. Mm. And we went through that. The problem is, is that you log on to your uh, Hotmail or I think, and think Gmail, and I haven't done this lately, so this is a little bit old news. And it says, oh, you're logging on from a different computer. Let's do the security check. Let's send you your password via SMS. Problem is, is you have a cell phone from Canada, United country. States, or whatever, and you're in Thailand or, or Indonesia. So how are you supposed to get an SMS? So you do all this security check. Oh, well, this is me. I was born on this date. Here's my whatever. And they're still kind of, mm, and then they lock your account for 28 days. Now, I think mm. they've alleviated this. I did some research on the internet. I think Outlook, you can do this, uh, uh, but, but I don't know for sure. But some things you can do to sort this out. If you have a contact in Asia. Brianna was saying it happened to her oh. in January in, in Dominican. Oh, my goodness. It's super stressful. Yeah, it's very stressful. That's how, one, if you, like, Brianna was saying her hubby's a realtor. He needs his email for work. Yeah. If you're trying to get your flight confirmation oh. by email because everything's done electronically now yeah. so so a couple tips of what you can do is uh, talk to your your service provider whether you're using Verizon in the States or TELUS or Bell or whatever in Canada uh, talk to them tell them what you're going to be doing and let them get you sorted out right off the bat and and ask for a, 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 a contact and a number that you can call overseas to get this sorted out that's your number one number one thing that you can do the other thing you can do is, um, luckily, you know, I, I'm operating with a lot of pilots and uh, we've done this in the past, is somebody will just set you up an email over there and you will forward all your email 
Oh, right. To that new Gmail account. Oh, that's a good. That's a good option. Auto forward. Yeah. Smart. And, and that's a great thing to do. But anyway, whatever you do, look into it before you go because if you have all your travel documents uh, uh, and you can't log on or your times whatnot, it, it's going to be a problem. The other thing you can do is make sure that you print out everything. Your your um, your itinerary, uh, your plane tickets, your confirmation numbers, and all that type of stuff, and have that with you. Do you talk you about go. passports at any point? Because sometimes I do actually. I was if I'm getting out. really organized, I will actually do old school and like take photocopies of the passports. Absolutely, all of that. Absolutely, this is like. And oh yeah, I saw that comment in nesting story. What was what she say? She's like her business partner would kill her if she couldn't get her emails. Oh, whatever that means. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so the trin the Trinity is uh is for sure email get that sorted out you're gonna need that get your banking sorted out mm. get your credit card company to allow your credit card to be used overseas there's this assumption sometimes that you you're just like invincible visa is everywhere no whatever yeah so there's that there's the uh there's the uh the the pat and then the passport issue that you brought up so with the passport issue, this thing is that it is illegal in a lot of countries to walk around without identification as a foreigner. Yeah. Uh, here's the problem with that, is that it's quite easy to get pickpocketed. It's not as common, it depends where you are, but uh, you can get pickpocketed very easily. You think you're gonna know, you won't know. I have some tips for kind of preventing that as well. Um, but carry at least a photocopy of your passport and the address and telephone yeah. number at the hotel that you're staying at. And make sure that they know uh, if the police stop you or somebody stops you and they call that hotel that you're a registered guest there. Actually, I think even our whole time in Malaysia, mm -hmm. when I got home and like kind of did the dump of the wallet, I even found an old like photocopy of my passport, the first one I had when I was there, yeah. just in my wallet. Because you just don't know, like, you want to be carrying this passport around with you everywhere. It's yep. a pain if you lose it. Yeah, so that's the, the three things that and you And then the fourth, thing, think, the fourth which thing, which maybe you wouldn't think about, is if you're traveling anywhere, with your child without the, the, the other parent. You actually oh, should have, absolutely. remember? Yeah. You need to have something in writing that's like, for example, when I came with Esme to Canada, I had a letter from you saying it was okay. And actually, there's a template, like a form you can print. Yeah, a birth, birth certificate, certificate, Jessica. Right, Jessica. Um, for us, we actually have to have like proof of, well, they have passports now. So because we don't share, we, we don't share my, my family name, mm. which is... So, but Just anyway, so a letter from the parent, like, so there was, um, I think on, for Canada, there's a form you can print out that where the other parent just signs it and says, yes, I approve travel um, if you're leaving the country. So that was something to consider. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> How about a uh, little fun fact? Remember when Esme and I came to Canada? We didn't have six months left on our passports. That was face palm oh that's another thing yeah. so I get to Canada so you need to yeah. have six months remaining until like before expiry in order to leave the country and then return yeah, sometimes so, some places you need a year right so yeah. Esme and I come back to Canada here I am like pregnant um, and we arrive and I'm like oh my god our passport so we get to the border in Canada and the guy's like well I hope you get your passport sorted before you leave. I'm thinking, mm, I'm going to have to have this baby in Canada. Like, there's no way. So it was a bit of a gong show. And I basically had to get Esme's passport and my passport redone. Then I had to prove that my husband was in a different country. It was kind of a nightmare, actually. Do you remember they had to call the, the consulate? and? Yeah. Well, I don't... I kind of remember some of that stuff. But yeah, it's very stressful. Yeah. But anyway, in the... Right. That's a, that's, number, that's a good one, uh, number four and stuff like that. Mm. So... Uh, besides that, so just just some other things that came up in the, I just thinking it's things that came up in the news uh, recently uh, in Canada there was a, a popular airline that was criticized because they uh, issued a ticket that was dependent on the load. So most airlines, and this is not a new thing, a lot of airlines have been doing this forever, is that they will oversell a flight by ten or twenty or thirty. Someone's saying, if your passport expires in December and you're leaving in July, yeah. mm, August, September, November, December. I well, just, you can, are you, uh, okay, well, if listen, if you're a Canadian or, or American citizen, you can expedite, uh, pay for uh, exponential, is exponential a word? No. You can pay to ex something else. expedite. <laughs> you can make it go quicker. You can make it, I'm uh, talking the basic. <laughs> Don't do that. And they, in the caveman you, language, you, caveman. you can make it go faster. Yes. Do you, you want to? You go ahead. You can tell. No, it's true. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just because if you're delayed, 
uh, no problem. Just uh, you, you can pay money talks, right? You can just get paid for it. And you can get an yeah. extension, or they'll issue a new passport. So that's not a big deal. Why are we talking about that? Somebody had a question. I didn't just pull it out of nowhere. So what was I talking about? Okay, you were talking about buying, and actually this just happened to me, where you buy an airline ticket because it's a real good price, and then you get to the gate, and if anybody watched the Orlando vlog, I called Dean's like, what tier did you buy? Okay, anyway. Right? And I get to the airport, and this is also has to be a conversation. It's not just Dean's tips. Oh, no, no, I'm not sure. I'm not saying that. (laughs) Holy God. So, whose channel is this? No, I'm kidding. Um... But I got to the airport and it said seat and there was no seat number mm-hmm. and I couldn't check in for my seat and I was a little bit confused but it was just me traveling so it wasn't so bad right. but this is what you're talking about where right. they have these seats that aren't really seats. Yeah, no they're seats but but they're dependent on the load and you can right. buy so many different levels so say you get the, the $500 ticket and it has uh, certain stipulations on your travel and you know whatever it's in the fine print so make sure that you're buying a ticket that matches your willingness to travel if you will like if you're just kind of yeah. well yeah i spent 500 dollars. i'm gonna go basically i'll give you the long story short is that you're gonna pay for you're gonna get what you pay for if you're like oh i just got a ticket for 500 dollars and it was a thousand whatever <laughs> nah, you're gonna run into trouble and if right. you don't run in if you don't run into trouble good for you and you're tra- and this is not the, this is not the video for you because you're just gonna do whatever the heck you want <laughs> Um, but just <laughs> right. be just be aware and and um, so th- that's one thing make sure that you're uh, uh, getting the um, the ticket that you want for the airline that yes, you want yes Brianna that's the one question carry on that's the one okay what else do you want to talk about what anything else you okay want? so things well I see this point here but his point number three it was genius because this I think is something people get worried about but money what kind of money should you be traveling oh, yes, with good one good one uh, cash yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, that's it. And, and there's a little bit to it. I, I was just watching because I, I, Amanda asked me to do this 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 blog or what is this, a vlog? It's a vlog. Whatever. So, and I, I, there's some things that, you know, it, being uh, traveling a lot, things change. They're very dynamic. Uh, you don't know uh, what's going to change from week to week. Mm-hmm. When I left Canada to go live in wherever, Malaysia, I, I took quite a bit of cash. And I was like, oh, you know, I should do something. And something in my mind, maybe from the past or something, I said, you know what, I'll get traveler's checks. I think that was me. No, no, it wasn't you. You, no? you didn't have, uh, you, um, no, it wasn't you. Okay. Because I just remembered all these travel checks. So anyway, I had a couple thousand dollars in traveler's check, which was a nightmare because number one, nobody wanted to take them. Number two, the bank was going to charge me a fortune to exchange them. Finally, I had a little expatriate. <laughs> and then somebody which we'll talk about again for some other, for some other useful tips. So traveler's checks, now nah, you don't want those. And, and don't rely, uh, see like, and then if you're relying only on your credit card and your bank card and something screws up. So this is what, so this is what came up about this, uh, uh, these, two school, these two schools of thought. I was reading online and one of these so-called travel experts, and you know what, really, is there any such thing as a travel expert? Yeah, I guess we travel a little bit more than other people, but you can look online in five minutes and find out. Or you, you know what you do, you can call the hotel and find out the lay of the land really True. quickly. So cash is king, bring cash. Uh, you can only travel with 10,000 US dollars, I believe in most places, uh, which is a lot of money, so. Um, but I, like if you were doing a crazy international move, like we were doing, which is why there was some traveler's checks, because it was like, you don't want to be only with cash. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to travel with some cash. The amount is up to you, $500, $250, $1,000, whatever you want. Yeah. You've talked to your bank already and you've set up so that you can use your ATM overseas as well as your credit card if you need to. Um, but the best thing to do, what I find to do as far as dealing with money as goes, is you're going to carry U.S. funds. That's number yeah. one. Canadian funds, hey, they're really, they're great. Uh, Australian uh, uh, currency is also great to carry, but uh, U.S. funds, no matter what the price goes up or the uh, the value of the dollar goes up or down, it seems to be pretty consistent. The second thing is that don't change your money at a bank. And with respect to banks, um, if you're in the United States or Canada and you're going to the bank, say, "Hey, I'm gonna I need some U.S. dollars." Well, you're gonna get killed. Totally. You're gonna get wasted. And to show up overseas and go to the airport and say, oh, I'm gonna need a little bit of money, how much for this, how much for that? No, same type of thing. What you need to go to is a money exchanger. 
So when you get to these places, now this is in India, this is in uh, uh, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, uh, um, where else would it be? Not too loud. You're yelling. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you're going to have these uh, um, these money exchangers. Yeah. And okay. Okay. usually you can ask at the hotel, right? Where to go. Where to go. And they will take take you to a reputable money exchanger. They'll give you a great rate. Yeah. Um, Going out on your own and doing this type of stuff, I mean, you can you can ask around or whatever. It's not that big of a deal. And don't be afraid. That kind of leads, maybe we're going off the structure, um, but don't be afraid to ask. Like, you're in a different place. You can ask people. Be friendly. People will help you. That's kind of the... And then, of course, you pay them a little bit, right, when they help you. Do you pay most people? Tipping. Oh, you mean uh, for at the hotel Tipping. stuff? Oh, you mean are you just walking around just, asking people? No, not random strangers, but like workers at the hotel and like that's something. Oh, yeah, we yeah, had yeah. a sure, driver sure, sure. in Malaysia and we became friends with them because we met them at the hotel. Yeah, right, right. right. I mean, you, you, sure you can. Well, and we just can talk as there's a bunch stuff. of new people that have just popped in. So in case you're yeah. new to my channel, this is my husband Dean. He is a pilot. What are your credentials? What do you fly right now? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. He flies a plane. So, so yeah. So we're we're talking about just. Uh, just tips for travel, tips right? For travel so, overseas. and with money, I mean, this is an interesting one. I see your other point. Like, how do you actually carry your money in your pocket? Yeah. So, you've. Uh, so, what have we covered so far? It doesn't matter. They, so, you they got know. your money. Yeah. Yeah. You got your money. You went overseas, and now you've gone to the money exchanger. You exchange your American dollars. And you got whatever currency on you. Now, what do you do with it? Well, if you walk around with it in your pants pocket and people are watching, you put your hands in your pocket and pull out money and pull out money and pull out money. Eventually, you're going to get into trouble. Right. Um, th this is common. This is how the world is poor. You're a cash cow. You're walking around. You're going to get ripped off eventually, or someone's going to try. So first thing you do, split up your money, put it in two separate pockets, uh, uh, with a, an elastic band around um, a flat wadded, a flat uh, folded piece of uh, a billfold. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to carry your wallet. Your identification can also go in there and stuff. The reason is, is because when you when you're Pickpocketing, like in my years of pickpocketing, <laughs> I've been told this is is when you have an elastic band or something that's kind of you can't rubbing pull it out. out. It's it's a little bit harder to get out. It's not impossible, right? Especially if but you might feel it if right you're on your pants ground. because yeah. it like it sticks that elastic band. Yeah, so you go you go back just, to yeah. So how do you deal with your money if you're carrying a little bit? Uh, you can use a, a, a money belt, which is good, or I like those ones that... Uh, Went in there. Like, the, I uh, personally... What do you call those? The neck? The yeah, the neck ones. The it's the like neck the money ones. belt that goes like that. Yeah. I wore a money belt like that because I don't really... As a woman, I don't know. I don't really carry money in my pocket. Like, it's a weird thing for me. I always have a purse. But my purse, I would wear it crossbody in the front of me, and I wouldn't have everything in my purse. Yeah. I'm conscious of, like, if you have a backpack and, you know, the outside pockets, I don't put anything of value in that initial pocket. You know what I mean? Right. So you're not like, so I'm just standing in line and then somebody could just zoop, zoop and pull it out. Like, no, everything's kind of in places where it would be harder to, to find. Yeah, and we're talking about traveling where say you're going to something, place a little bit off the beaten path. Right. You're not in Barbados walking around and, you know, you want to be have a certain amount of fashion about you and you want to carry <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. You don't that. have like your fanny belt. <laughs> you got your fanny back <laughs> and your stinky, your stinky sandals. People are like, what the... So we got a story about that. Then you oh, should one, get mugged, right? One, <laughs> you should be mugged. No. God. One funny story, though, about your mom in the middle Don't of... Tell that story. It is so funny. Your mom Don't tell that story. It. Okay, you can tell that. <laughs> now everybody's like, oh, tell the story. So we're in Indeed, Cambodia. I know, it's so cute. And But the fact is, is my mother-in-law... She's, she's got like a little halo or something like no one really bothers her but she's in the middle of Cambodia where people are selling scarves and anything they can get money for and she pulls out her giant lady wallet that's like the size of my forearm. She's got about 400 US in there in Cambodian <laughs> money. Just, just a big wad and like um no no, no, I, no, the, no I don't want there. no I, I'm dealing with your friend I will buy off your friend no okay, I okay, love off, her so is much is that your brother okay I will buy <laughs> scarves are coming out of the woodwork and carvings just, of like monkeys we're just <laughs> standing back just we're watching like, it go down my mom's gonna get rolled but she doesn't cause she but would she doesn't tell get, you but she's got the Jedi mind trick she does which 
it's like awesome another great job so so, so you can do something so, so when you're walking uh, uh, you know uh, split up your money a little bit you can put it in the sole of your shoe yeah um, you know when you go to the washroom whatever you can get some more out that can be your mm. base you can cut a little slit in your shorts and you can stick a little bit in there whatever yeah. so it's like, um, like serious tra- yeah traveling. no no it's all serious travel I mean it's it's nice to if you if you get rolled mm-hmm. if you had a little bit of money Totally. Uh, to go on. And then um, and then the final thing I was just talking about is hotel room, uh, stashing your money in a hotel room. Oh, yeah. Those safes that go beep, 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 whatever, they're, they're very easy to open and all the staff can open them just in a matter of minutes. So your stuff isn't really that secure there. Um, some things that you can do, uh, you can rent, rent a safety. Am I talking that loud? Yeah, you are. It's okay. Though. Okay, I got a little it's bit of a cold. It's, yeah, it's a little so. echoes in our kitchen. Okay. We're in the kitchen, so we got to be quiet. But it's true. I didn't know that about the... The safes, like you would think, you would assume that you could put it in there. Well, if you if you ever forgot your code, of <laughs> life in it. She goes, you get home, you get home and you're still finding money. <laughs> <laughs> you're like awesome, oh, but it's nothing home. you can use. You're like, ooh, some Cambodian. <laughs> oh what god, the, it's got elephant crap on oh, it. Oh, sorry, that was a night. <laughs> that, that was a good one. You got me good. Um, okay, that's good. Mm-hmm. There's a couple questions. So one of them, kind of unrelated, kind of not, is what if you were not flying a plane, you're actually a passenger, which by the way is horrible to be flying with a pilot when they're not flying. Just saying. But what if you were gonna order a drink, what would you order? What do you what? So what do you want to I don't even know how you got on that subject. And what are you talking about? It's bad to travel with pilots. I think that you've been doing it for so long that you know too much. And oh, God. Anyway, okay, sure. That's a story for and another you're, day. And you're, and you're the best. You need a... I anyway. sit down. Mm-hmm. What would I order on you a sit plane? Down after, Oddly you enough. You sit down after like eight Sherpas bring all your okay. stuff. Okay. Da, 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 da. Really full? <laughs> we traveled from, what was it? Manila back to Canada. It was what, a 12-hour flight? I breastfed for 10 hours. We split the money. See, this lady, uh, yeah. I think it was Julie, split the money. You split the money amongst yourselves, and, and you always have a backup. Yes, Sarah. So that, that's, yeah. yeah that's, she was just saying, it's like watching medical programs with nurses or doctors. It's just the things you talk about, I don't know, and I just want to get there. But on a plane, oddly enough, I like to order a Clamato juice when we're on Air Canada or something like that. Just a You mean like a flight. drink, like an alcoholic just drink? you could order a drink. When Dean used to work for one of these other airlines, don't talk about bring any, out like a specific thing, please. <laughs> It was lovely. Um, yeah. But travel, I think there's a lot of people here traveling with kids and tips to get mm-hmm. through an airport. So we'll get to a few other ones in a minute here because mm-hmm. it's there's so much you can talk about in terms of travel. But now if we want to talk about travel with kids aspect, um, when I was traveling with Esme, when she was, how old was she the first time? Just two and a bit. Two, yeah, I think not even yet two actually. Uh, the iPad, and we have the iPad holder that has the little handles. That was amazing. So the iPad, uh, I saw somebody say baby wearing, amazing. So baby wearing, and then uh, what was the other thing? Snacks go a long way. Mm -hmm. And I got these lollipops that made me feel better because they were organic. But every time we were going to do something, so like we'd get off the plane and we'd be, I'd have my little, just the little umbrella stroller. Because you know what? Culprit, I made the mistake of traveling around the earth with the biggest stroller known to man. And... (laughs) When I sold that stroller, I, I think he I shed I was starting to like you, and now, <laughs> I don't know. He's Things like, Wait. are working out between us. Yeah, so be smart. Like, don't want it to be too heavy because somebody else has to carry all this crap, and yeah. So, snacks, you iPads. Have to, you have to carry all that crap. I know. Every dude in the world on this is like going, oh my God. I know. Just get angry. Just go in the backyard and sit in there for a while. It's like, I can't believe it. I'm... Don't the things the camera <laughs> All these emotions are bubbling to the surface. Um, I, listen, I'll tell you a story. So, um, but one question. No, was, I want to say one one thing about this stupid stroller. <laughs> and now you set me off on a. a so, <laughs> By the way, so I've, I've been to I've been stroller. to Australia a number time a number of times with the airline I used to work with. And one Christmas, when, when we were she she had joined me overseas and we, we went to Australia. And I used to walk up Bondi's. Beach Road and onto Bond, you know, it's such a oh wow, I'm at Bondi Beach and I'm semi fit because I have to work out to stay in shape because I work in Asia. <laughs> and years later, I show up with <laughs> with a toddler. I'm hauling this uh, City Select stroller, which is a very good stroller, by the way. It's a wonderful. Just in case you're coming after me legally, <laughs> it's a perfect stroller. 
but it's a heavy mother trucker. So, so I'm walking, and you know I'm sweating all that. I got boob sweat, and I'm I sit my stuff a, down, and these girls, are, these, these nice these these nice fit young <laughs> ladies, are just like look at me. Oh, your kid is so cute. I'm like, yeah. Really she cute. was really. And cute. meanwhile, you're like going over there. No, over there. No, no. This is lies. No, no lies, over there. Lies. No, but I tell you this though, the sand in on Bondi is so fine that we there was still sand it in is those fine. in those nooks. It is fine when you're trying to unfold that city select <laughs> and it's binding in the gears and you're brushing it out with your with your toothbrush because your wife's like set it because up. Because it cost eight million dollars because at my hormonal state I had it shipped from the U.S. to Malaysia. I mean, there's crazy things. I just need a, I just need a minute. I just here. need a minute. Joking. I will say this though, sold it for a good price. High five? No? Not today. Not today. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Just what someone was saying with traveling with kids, like some kids want to run around the airport, let them. Um, a lot of airports, like depending on the airport, of course, but a lot of airports I looked at in advance. So for example, the Hong Kong airport has a facility where you can have a rest. You can have a shower. Like a, a, a rest sleep, lounge. A rest yeah. lounge. Where the only trouble though is it's cheaper than a hotel room right but it's like one giant room that's quietly divided and there's beds in there and then there's a shower so I knew that Esme would nap at a certain point and I was still breastfeeding so we did that but that's when I wasn't pregnant with Jack the second time I traveled we got a hotel room which I didn't wake up and you had to wake me up to catch my flight thank god for this guy over here but um Oh, now I'm... Oh, yeah. Listen, you're, you're good. We love you. But but I think just looking in advance, there's always... Sometimes there's places in really nice airports, like Singapore's beautiful airport, Hong Kong's beautiful airport, um, where the kids can go and play, and there's, like, facilities. and. Um, but I kind of feel yeah, like... Yeah, if you're going as a single mom or a single dad... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's got its challenges for sure. And the thing is, is that you really got to strategize. You might go, oh, I'm not spending 150 US dollars for a hotel. There's no way. We'll tough it out in the airport. Yeah, you kind of will and you, you know kind of won't you that kind of will hotel room and was a godsend because you get to the hotel room <laughs> you can like have a bath you know I we just relaxed we had a sleep you get some food it's yeah. amazing so what I was gonna finish saying is I got excited <laughs> Go. um, do you want a drink or something or? carry on uh, what what you got to do is is uh, you got to conserve your energy, especially if you're doing long haul types flying and stuff. And said, like, yeah, you know what? It's an investment. You maybe you tough it out in the airport. You don't get the hotel room. You hold your kids like you're, you know, you're, you you got to keep track of your kids and whatnot. And then you're like, I made it, I made it. And you look back and you're like, oh, did I not have a did I not have a backpack a little while mm -hmm. ago? And yeah. it's gone. So keep your wits about you, especially when you're traveling. All this thing rolls into to uh, itself, you know. Uh, uh, your safety and security, carrying the right amount of money, not getting ripped off, uh, staying orientated and keeping your wits about you. I mean, that's an and important try, thing. And for someone like me, like I, when I, the second time I traveled there, it had been for, um, it had been for a, a death in the family. So I was very, oh, someone's got to go and time out. Bye bye. Um, but Why do they say? Because they say bad things. Don't repeat well, that. <laughs> anyway, it's gone. <laughs> so. Well, well thank you. <laughs> Doing. Well, <laughs> goodness me. So, but when I was traveling with Esme and I'm pregnant, I was very. I'm not ready to see that. No, I can't unsee it. <laughs> I was very emotional and stressed out and anxiety ridden, and I think I cried like, uh, like ten times over the course of getting from Malaysia to Canada. And I think that that's like it's not everybody. Just because I've done it doesn't mean I like. I'm like, yes, I was amazing and I was an expert the entire time. Like, I find it very stressful to do that by myself. So even though it's stressful, I think it's still worth it to certain in certain things to go and travel and do those big trips on one hand. On the other hand, I'm like, that's insane. Do you really need to be traveling with your kids around the earth? I don't know. So you have a very... I think there's some more questions that we need to ask about this whole thing. If it, if it, it in my opinion, if, and it's not a personal criticism against you, but some people you said, okay, there's here, you're here, and you're you want to go there, and this is a high wire here mm -hmm. over the Grand Canyon. There's a <clears> lot <throat> of risk involved. And you're like, yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, and you just want to go. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter what you say, you just want to go. Sometimes you know it's, it's best to stay home. It, I agree, uh, and I think sometimes a life happens, and that was you can tell that was a difficult decision to make because I had a family member that passed away the day of my flight. 
what do you do? Do you not go and lose out on all this money you just spent on all your flights and everything? Or do you go? Anyway, it was very, it was very complicated and it was a while ago, but yeah. um, it was still hard. Obviously, traveling with a partner is better, but there was a question earlier about um, uh, should, you should no no if you are going to travel should you upgrade like does is it more beneficial to no. be in first class no. versus economy I would say no the one thing no. we did is we upgraded there's a new thing with some airlines it's like economy plus which is like a little bit more room it was nice but you you're, know what you're, it's you're, not that you'll, much you'll nicer. make more money if you want to upgrade to uh, first class first class yeah lovely whatever business class okay um, economy class if you're going as a family of four buy four seats and then you you know yeah. your, your kids can can stretch stretch out or, or whatever they can you know you have the end seats in the middle like a, a, say a um a triple seven a f was it four in the middle or five in the middle four in the middle mm -hmm. and you could buy the four seats and then parents on the end and kids kind of sleep akimbo beside each other yeah and um and but be prepared for people but, but, to hate but look you at the, a little look bit. at the prices and shop around and stuff like yeah. that. Listen, you know what? First class travel, business class travel. Come it's no on. Joke. Well, yeah, it's no joke. And you know what? You don't need to be paying that kind well, of money. Well, there was a question someone had that they have the opportunity to go to Malaysia. It's a 22-hour flight with their two-year-old or leave their two-year-old with grandma. Which, which airline are you flying? doesn't matter the it kind of does the matter question, it kind of does matter oh about leaving the child or no no the, it, the question was do oh. i bring the child not do you go it's do they bring their child or do they leave their child at home with grandma what, what, whatever you want but but it depends on you know like where what would you, you do it's not really a matter of that it's like what airline are you going on what city are you stopping and is it a 22 hour it can't be 22 hours because you can go everywhere on earth on 22 hours so there has to be a stopover. Is a stopover Bangkok? Is a stopover Hong Kong? The question is, do you bring the child? Sure. Or do you leave them? At sure. sure. You're really though. You wouldn't. You don't feel like it's that it, children should be traveling because it's kind of they don't remember anything. No, I'm. I'm just saying. Okay. Well, it, it, yeah, I don't know. Basically, it's like this. If you if the question was is that <laughs> should I take the child? It's a pretty nebulous question. The whole thing is that if you're overnighting in in. No, the question is. Yeah. You're not getting the question. Holy do you bring you the child a with you? Tonight. Do you bring the child with you, or do you leave them at home? <laughs> Answer the question. I would say it's not a black or white answer. Sure, leave the child at home. I feel like leave the child. Whatever. But if you have a safe group of people, like. But a, it's kind of like is that a, is a, anyway? There's more to the question than that. No, no. That was the question. That was the question. Two year old? They they travel fine. What's the they problem? Do. Well, it's it's hard for sure. It's up to you. What kind of trip do you want to have? Do you want to bring your kid? Uh, yeah, I guess. Can I no offer questions. an antidote to that, or is sure. it just uh, the flipping of the coin? Because <laughs> I got coins, so I can flip one for Go. you. No, the the thing about it is that if you're if you're traveling to like if you're doing like a Hong Kong overnight, you have that little area. What is that? Uh, Tung Chung, whatever the hell is, right right by the airport. You mm -hmm. have the uh, Swiss uh, Novotel. You have a few other hotels right there. Uh, yeah. They're great. They're quiet. They're air conditioned, and um, it's very convenient. That's a great Bangkok. Also, there's uh, but not at the air. Uh, there's one at the airport or two at the airport. Bangkok's a great overnight, uh, and it's very restful. I mean, really, all you need is twelve, or it depends where you're coming from. If you're coming from New York, you're gonna fly over the pole, but you're you're looking at a maximum of eleven hours at the t I think at the high end to get over there, so. You're gonna rest, and then where are you going from there? A, a double stop through. We're talking about timing. Oh. Do you bring the child to go through all of this travel for a trip they're never gonna remember except for photos? Oh, for if you have a safe that. group of people also, to watch them, I I, it depends. I it's really know. personal I choice. Know. Whatever. I don't know that I could leave my kids, and I don't know. It's I don't know if I can much. answer those. You have <laughs> it's no <tricky> questions. Question. <laughs> it's late. We are tired. No, I'm not tired. Hmm. Yeah, it's no joke. Uh, Jillian was saying she doesn't know how she could travel with a young child, and it's hard. Like I, looking back, I actually ended up cutting my trip to Canada short because I was so exhausted and it was just too much for me to be doing it by myself. And then I ended up going home earlier. Any last things? I, we're gonna probably have to do another segment like this, travel tips, because there's so much more. We've already been chatting for 33 minutes. Oh, did you want? Yeah. Whatever you want to talk about now, or we can talk about it at another time and stuff like that. Um, Those are some good, like, initial yeah, just ones. Yeah, some other stuff that, you know, if, if you don't mind, if I might offer a few it. things. Is uh, just when you get to your places, you know, other things that you might want to consider. 
uh, where you're traveling is uh, travel insurance uh, for flight cancellations and whatnot, especially for medical uh, yeah. problems. Uh, we used Nomad insurance. I oh yeah, World Nomad. Or World Nomad, like which is great. It was really Everywhere. great because even though we were Canadian, we didn't have Canadian coverage. Yeah, because we had left a job and then we were out in the world, so we had to we had to pay for this, and yeah. and it was the best thing we ever did is is have that. Yeah. Um, uh, so we ended up using it. So travel insurance, yeah. and then pl things to remember, just little things, you know, like uh, I'll give you an example, like traveling to Bali, you can go across to Lombok. Well, there's not a doctor, I don't think, in Lombok. There's no police there for sure. Just keep it, keep it in mind where you're going when people are saying, oh, yeah, hey, let's go. Uh, if, right. you're, if you're injured or if you're hurt, um, you need to have a plan to get out of there and if there's no medical uh, uh, assistance you're gonna have to f have a friend help you and we've all seen Leonardo DiCaprio's The Beach when you get sick in a tropical country nobody thinks you're very fun anymore True. and sadly I got hurt on that remember I got hurt on the scuba diving trip yeah and it was just like yeah Sorry. I guess you're gonna die yeah. yeah that's fine we're out in the in the South China Sea and I, we're walking, I'm walking down these stairs, which was ridiculous. I had the tanks on and everything. Yeah. And at the very bottom stair, it was kind of LJ covered. Slip, bang, hurt my knee. Ouch. Are you okay? Yeah, I don't really care, but are you okay? And you're literally in like a floating <laughs> little thing out in the middle of this water. Yeah. And... It was ridiculous. And they, they really didn't care until we got back. We were staying at a very expensive hotel in Malaysia. And uh, when they got back, they went... Why is he being wheeled in a wheelchair? Yeah. Why didn't you guys bring him back right away? So. And it was like a two and a half hour drive. Did you already, just already say that? It's two and a half. It was. It was a really really long least, drive yeah, to get from hours. where we were scuba diving. So to the that. so the moral of the story is have some insurance and just be aware where you're traveling because you know what people, people don't yeah. care. No. They don't. You get hurt. You're on your own. You it's really that feel are. good mentality, right? When everyone's like, just come and have fun and it's great. And then you yeah. get hurt, they're like, let's put them over in the corner so we don't have to worry yeah, about it. You them. have to really be careful with that. That's that's one one of my big concerns is, well, even like, is always traveling as well. It's not that bad. People talk about, you know, the safety and, oh, I'm going here and I'm safe. Are these, uh, are these people going to hurt me? Uh, no, they're not. Uh, listen, I'll tell you, when we came back to the West, the media freaks you out so bad about the world you don't want to go outside the door but in reality yeah there's some dangerous places if you avoid 20 something males in groups that's pretty well 90 percent of your problem uh, uh for safety and of course riots and that type of thing and disease and you, you'll pretty well be okay but don't worry so much about it. have a good time yeah. all this advice is you know a little bit like oh oh dean's telling me a lot of stuff here but a lot of it's common sense but if you stick to the banking, the email, the travel insurance, and the passport, uh, just have your basics stuff. covered, right? Have your basics covered. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah, and, and do it. Travel and travel and, and see the world. Don't stop traveling. Just the world's a great place, and and you got to see all of it. Yay! Well, guys, that was it. That's our travel segment piece. We're only doing water tonight, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're new. She says, come to Singapore. Been to We've Singapore. We've been. It's to the so zoo, fun. to that night safari. Remember Singapore and the night safari? Oh my goodness, yeah. Fun times, and the, fun the times. Singapore flyer? Uh, that's the Ferris wheel, but remember the, the, the night safari? Yeah, I do. That yeah. was cool. You couldn't and see anything. Chimes. Is that called oh, it's chimes? chimes. It's, it's like that big, beautiful. Oh yeah, chimes. Yeah, chimes. Uh, the old uh, monastery that turned into all the restaurant. Oh yeah, Singapore is so great. Beautiful. Singapore is great uh, for for a couple weeks, and uh, it's it's nice. There's very lots small. Of, it's, right? it's very small. Yeah, it's very small. That's but it's, so nice. uh, people in Singapore are lovely. Oh, so Going nice. Going back to Dublin soon for me. Nice. Oh, Dublin, lovely. Haven't been there yet. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Um, if you're new, please subscribe. And I will see you today's Monday. So I'm going to see you on Wednesday. I switched up the the Singapore Flyer. That's it. Um, but I switched up my schedule where I'm now uploading Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays instead of Sunday. So I'm like doing the weekly thing. All right, guys. Thank you. We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye.